it has been a while since I did a video, and I really want to get back into the swing of things. Today I want to talk about Vanek Vector's Semiconductor ETF. The symbol is SMH. Back on August 2nd, Torsten and I did a live stream where we explored some of the best dividend stocks in the semiconductor industry. This was because Intel had come out with some news that caught our attention, and we wanted to talk about the industry, what companies were involved, who their customers are, and how these companies looked as investments going forward. I will link that live stream video in the notes. I mentioned SMH near the end of the video as a good play if you wanted to try to capture the entire industry. And I wanted to spend some time digging in and really looking at the fund itself. I want to look at the history, the components, and the performance since the fund was launched in 2011. This stock has been floating at or near the very top of my total growth investing ranking list for several months now. When it first appeared on my radar, it jumped right to number one. And at the time, I was amused because SMH also stands for shaking my head in social media abbreviations. And I thought that was appropriate. Vanek Vector's Semiconductor ETF is an exchange traded fund out of Vanek Global, an investment management company that was founded as International Investors Incorporated in New York in 1955. The founder of the company was John C. Vanek who was the son of Baron Jean Carrel Van Eck, one of the founders and president of the American branch of the Royal Dutch Shell Corporation. The original intent of the company was to enable access to foreign growth stocks for investors on Wall Street. But then they started a gold mining focused investment strategy in the late 1960s, just in time for gold's bull run in the 1970s. This was the country's first gold-oriented mutual fund. The semiconductor ETF SMH is based on the MVIS US-listed Semiconductor 25 Index. MVIS stands for Market Vector Index Solutions, which is a research company out of Frankfurt, Germany, that was launched by Van Eck in 2011 and renamed MVIS in 2016. In order to qualify for inclusion in the index, a company must have a market capitalization of 150 million US dollars, have a three month average daily trading volume of 1 million US dollars for three sequential reviews, and have at least 250,000 shares traded per month over the last six months for three sequential reviews. All of these companies have at least 50% of the revenues coming from semiconductors, so it's a pure play in the industry. Shares of SMH are currently at a price of 173.15. It's a good price designed for and around institutional investors. Van Eck is a very well-established brand, and their exchange-traded funds can be found at nearly all of the major brokers and trading apps. Looking beyond just semiconductors, Van Eck has exchange-traded funds focused on investing all over the world in many different sectors and industries. SMH currently has $2.63 billion under management, all focused on the information technology sector in the semiconductor industry. In terms of the performance of the fund, let's look at Seeking Alpha. Over the last 10 years, they have returned 560.67%. But if you add dividends and compounding on top of that, the total return goes up to 650.26%. They were hit by COVID-19, but the recovery of the components has been spectacular, easily beating the market average seen here in blue as the S&P 500 index. The difference between price return and total return isn't that much because the dividend yield is consistently low. But, with the performance numbers we see here, it's just another bonus on top of a fantastic return. I said that the dividend yield was consistently low. Right now, it is at 1.23%, and the fund pays dividends annually. Over the last four years, the average yield has been 1.28%. What makes it worth looking beyond this is the yield on cost and dividend growth. 
If you look at yield on cost, you can see how it has been growing just over the last five years. If you had bought this fund in 2015, your yield on that investment would be 4.21%. If you had bought the fund at the beginning, your yield on cost would be around 7%. Remember, we don't invest for today, we invest for tomorrow. And the dividend growth has been amazingly high, with a compounded annual growth rate of 54.44% over three years, or 27.41%, for five years. They don't have a full 10-year history, so the 10-year growth rate is going to be zero on my ranking list, but the other numbers certainly make up for it. Because they only pay dividends annually, we don't know exactly what they're going to pay next time, but we do have the schedule for it. We're expecting a declaration on December 28th, 2020. We're expecting an ex-div date of 1229, a record date of 1230, and a pay date of January 5th. Everyone's wondering what the numbers are going to be. The index that the fund is based upon consists of the top 25 semiconductor companies on U.S. markets. Seeking Alpha shows us the top 10 holdings, and I'd like to show you why this fund has such a good performance over the last 5 to 10 years. Let's take a look at the components one at a time on Seeking Alpha. The first one is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. This is 5 years, and this is 10. A 10-year ten total return of 998%. Second one is NVIDIA. 10-year ten, ten total return, 4,993%. Next one is Intel. 10-year total return just around the S&P. Remember, this is why we're doing this, because we saw this drop because of the news. But still, they're matching the S&P over 10 years. Next is AMD. Total return over 5 years? Let's look at 10. 1,062%. Five years is even higher. Wow. Qualcomm. Five year, beating the S&P. Ten year, matching the S&P. ASML Holdings. Over five years, 340%. Over ten years, 966%. Let's look at Broadcom. Over five years, 231%. And over 10, 1,859%. Texas Instruments, one of my favorite stocks. Over 5 years, 230. Over 10, 573. LAM Research, over 5 years, 446%. Over 10 years, 781. Last one, Applied Materials. Over 5 years, 320.28 and over 10 years, 518.37. So you can see from those graphs why this fund has been doing so well. In closing, remember where our global civilization is going over the next few decades. 5G wireless, Starlink, self-driving cars, the logistical transformation of our supply chain, blockchain systems transforming our financial world and making everything digital data. We already have so many people working from home because of the pandemic and so many more people entering the 21st century in developing countries. They're skipping the analog, going directly to cell phone and computer networks, connecting everyone on earth with anyone else on earth with the touch of a button. We have 3 billion people to bring online so they don't miss out on the transformation of our global civilization into a unified and functional economy that can provide for and employ everyone. It's a tall order, but the companies in this index are going to be at the point of the spear leading us into the next steps of the information age and beyond. Is your portfolio ready for that? 
thank you for watching. This was the first video I've done in a few weeks, and it was fun to put together. I'm going to be setting a goal to have at least one new video every week, plus whatever live stream I can find the time for. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. I look forward to your comments and suggestions on what stock I should look at and perhaps add to my watch list. May your portfolio stay green and growing.